everybody. Right there, 2020 can stuff it. Uh, we're moving on 2021. I hope and pray that it's much better for everyone around the world and everyone is much safer. And let's get this new year started. We're back to the old skidamarole here. S-993A. Desoldering pump. Yeah, more fun with this thing. Uh, we've changed out the element twice now and videos. Uh, last time I did, I've had other issues going on with it. Something's not right. This is getting red hot. The uh, nozzle's getting very... It, it, it actually gets red hot right in here. And that's a brand new tip, by the way. So I obviously got something going on. Uh, I did some testing. Uh, and I thought about it, and it just, like, right off the bat, and kind of knowing the circuit, that always helps. Uh, kind of got lucky too, is, well, we're not sure if we're lucky yet or not, but uh, I was thinking the triac. Either we got a shorted something transistor that's not letting it shut off, or the triac is. So, since the heating element is tied to, through the triac as it comes in, you got basically two lines of power going on here with this. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this pretty good. I'll try to hold it nice and still for you. Basically is what you got going on is this line right through here. This is your motor, your speed control for your motor, which is your pump, your pumping action. The AC down here coming through is that's right to your heater element, which is heating up the solder and then obviously the pump pumps it out so i was hoping it was that but i really wasn't sure and triacs are kind of weird like there's not i don't really know a way but i didn't really investigate it all heavily either uh i just pulled the uh, one out it was reading actually resistance um i actually wrote it on one of the papers here uh yeah so the one that come out it was ph 600 D BT 134 if you put in BT 134 uh, it seems to always come up BT 137 for some reason that's very popular I don't maybe I seen it wrong I don't know my eyeballs are bad sometimes anyways BT 134 or 7 and spacebar 600 D that sets up 600 volt and the D is probably uh, code for amperage, what, it, what it's rated amperage-wise. Anyways, uh, between pin 1 and 2, there's 0 ohms, so short. And between pins 1 and, or 2 and 3, I'm sorry. I should have put the arrows uh, on there. Uh, 2 and 3 is 137.7 uh, ohms. So, really, that's not enough to beep on my beep, and uh, beep, if you put it in continuity beep mode, you know. Uh, it's something people don't realize is, well, there's a there got to be a cutoff. You're not going to have it beeping at mega ohms, you know, because you could hold it in both hands and it's not going to beep, you know. You're, you're when you're running continuity testing. Uh, I believe mine's at 40, 40 ohms. Anything over 40 ohms, greater than 40 ohms, it won't beep. So that's the cutoff, and that seemed to be with two of my units, but mine are cheap, so who knows. So, anyways, uh, I did find another one that's very similar. It was. It was not one of these. It was, a, I believe it was an F. It was a 600F. Pretty much the same setup. So right now I got it pulled out. It was a real pain in the hoofta. Just the way everything's kind of hooked in here. And um, zoom me in so you can kind of get a good look at it. Come on now. And basically it's right there is where you're going to want to look you'll see the three pins that haven't been soldered yet and that's come on jesus what a yeah i didn't solder them yet that's they're already schlicked up and uh i hit them with the uh what do they call that stuff oh yeah flocks Ugh. uh so i'm just ready to pop, plug this in this heats up in like five seconds as you'll see and uh Put some solder on them and make them happy. Make them rain, right? And I think that that'll do it. If not, I don't know. This thing is just, it, it just, 
seems to be one thing after another with it. Like I said, this is the third heating element. So that's crazy and they're like $18 as it is. So it sucks. You know, it really sucks. It sucks. But I hope everyone's having an awesome New Year so far. Yeah, we're good to go here. So, uh, you guys can see nice, nice and good. You can zap you in more if you want. Wah, wah. Always go the wrong way. Always. There we go. You tip for me. And I got it clamped down just with a little alligator clip on that side. So, I'm going to heat the pin. Heat the pin so that it makes sure it uh, sets up on the other side too, you know. That's the one thing that I, I still struggle with a little bit. In fact, I'm really fighting with the my father's multimeter. Old, like, uh, it looks like the Simpson, the square ones. Uh, you can't get at the front side of the board when you want to solder in the wires or even components. So you're trying to solder through from the back side and man, oh, it's just it's just a nightmare. So that's kind of, this, but that's the same here. You want both sides to have nice, full thick solder. So that should be good. We'll take a peek. Oh yeah, that looks good. That looks very good actually. Uh, now the way that's set up, it just hangs there. There's no heat sink for it or nothing. Uh, that'll come off. I want to test my wires here, just check them with the tweezers, just put a little tension on them just to make sure that they're they're not loose inside there, just because they have been jostled. That one, just the hose is loose, if you've seen it bouncing around. Okay. And the potentiometer, I don't know what in the world happened with the potentiometer. It's got a button. In fact, it's right here. Here's a button that plugged into it. Oh, you know what? What the hell? Man, I, I just am brain dead. That's that's all it is. Here's the potentiometer anyways. Um, B102. I couldn't find it. There it is. Duh. Well, we're going to try with that the one that's in there first because uh, it's in there and it's, it's happy there. Now tuck your wire. Oh, I'm going to unplug this so I don't scorch my arm. Get after it. Make sure you tuck your wires down in here real well. They fit real tight right along where the motor is here. They, it just is a real tight spot. And the other thing is you make sure that you don't tuck your wires next to because at the very back here there is the stem sticking out of the shaft that's going to be spinning when that pump is going and you don't want the wires to be stuck up against that, pressed up against it because it, as it spins it's going to burn through the wires eventually and it's going to be, it'll ruin your day. Okay. There and there, that's in, which is our contact switch. Okay, cool. Let's see if I can get these started. They're just tiny little screws. Man, you start talking with PCB board, FR4, rating, you know, the green PCB board. You start talking plastics with the screws going in. You're only really allowed so many times of taking it apart, stripping it down, working on it, and then putting it back together before eventually then you're gonna strip a screw out, then you're, you're, something else is gonna happen, then you're gonna pull a trace on the on the PCB, and it, it's always, you know, you, you really, it's not like the hard, the hard mechanical work, like working on the, the brushes for the motor or something like that, where you can get right in there and change them right out you know it's just making your connection a good connection and that it's a little bit tougher than that I uh, centered this 
uh, my pot here is centered, so figuring it'll be halfway. I never really adjusted it much anyway, to be honest with you. Um, never had much issue with it either. You could run it actually fairly low temp, and it, it always it it always seemed like it was screaming hot. Uh, that's even when it was normally working. If it ever normally worked, who knows? What's going on with this thing? Boy, this thing's being a real toughest. Are you serious? Really? It just doesn't fit normally through like you think it would. And just here's our strain relief. What the hell keeps beeping? It freaking really throws me for a loop. Probably the video stopped probably 30 minutes ago. It's probably what's beeping. I haven't found out yet. Wires look good, nothing's trapped or that. Get to double check. Okay. Look in here, just a tuckeroo. And you got that one right there in the middle. I'll put a marker on it so you guys can see it real well. So you don't want to. I seem to be notorious at that a lot of times. In fact, I just did it with my dad's, I said, his multimeter. In fact, it's this right here. It's, a, it's made by Wazoo and Company. No, I don't know. It's a range doubler. No, it means that it has a range doubler switch. But it's that's what it is. Sears. Okay, it's Sears. But it's being a real fusser for some reason. I don't know what its issue is. It it has it's exactly the, the the symptoms are it don't work. There's no contact. You bang it and then all of a sudden the needle spikes to where right around where it should be. So there's a bad contact. Well, I've been over the board both sides of it with the microscope over there. I can't find nothing. I thought I found what was wrong and I didn't obviously and I it's a real head scratcher right getting to be really. Uh, hopefully now that I I uh, gotta test it one more time. I think I'm just gonna get to the point where I'm gonna take it and I just redo every solder joint that I see, just do a whole quick sweep of solder joints. Just touch them up real quick. Uh, it, or, or a cold solder joint, it could be. It acts like that, actually, too. More than actually a loose wire. Loose wire, it, it, uh, I mean, you'll bang it three, four times, and it won't move, and then the fifth time, all of a sudden, you'll jar it just right, and it'll go. It even had it where if you had it like this, and you squeezed right here, that would do it. So, um, for a second, that's why I wanted to get it under the microscope. I was wondering if the board didn't have a crack in it. Uh, I remember that happened to me. I don't remember what it was I was working on, but that happened. I could not find where the issue was, and it was the darn uh, board. And the, you know, the traces on one side, well, every time that there was a little stress, that connection was lost, you know? And then when you let it re reflect back, it would, uh, make the connection again so yeah that was a real tricky one I remember I do remember that uh, here is where that potentiometer is supposed to line up I just put it on the other side so it's just vacant for right now but who knows I don't really know if this is gonna work or not but there's only one way to find out and that's let her have it you might see a freaking blowout right here you never know. Oh, I forgot the, I, I didn't tighten it down all the way anyway. Forgot the little uh, strain relief gimmick. So we'll give it, I'll just plug it uh, up. I'll go dim bulb first because I don't really trust it all that much, especially dealing with the triac and straight with the AC. So I'll get plugged in here and I'm just flipping my isolation transformer. And it does have a light so we should have a light that would be on until the, it reached its temperature and then it would turn off. 
Uh, uh oh. I'm getting, I don't know if you can see that. I'll show you. What the hell is this thing in the way for? Get you guys. See the bulb whacking out? Yeah, that's probably not good. So, who knows? But uh, the other thing is, is I just want to plug it into the mains because, well, mains with the isolation transformer, not, uh, don't want a death wish, blow everything out. Because with the heating element in that, sometimes I found I, I'm not running enough amps for it to run the circuit correctly and it can do like a, a stall kind of like what that was doing you know it just ain't running right working right so we're plugged in I'll just flip what do we got nothing Woo! that works but why do I not my heating oh yeah it's heating sweet now, hopefully it doesn't get red hot. Let me get out my, uh, my thermal. Gave back my little gun that worked so nice. That thing was sweet, so now I gotta have to go to this. Oh, now I gotta find something to, to solder. Ah, uh, let me, give me one second now. Grab something to defraud or be slaughtered on. Damn it, naturally it's got to be something with freaking pins in it. What do we got? Let's see what we got for heat. This goes up to over, uh, I hope you guys can, there it is. It should go up to over, uh, 400 degrees. Oh yeah. I mean, that was kind of the reason why I got it. So you can see it, it's topping out at almost 400. So that's plenty enough to desolder. Shut it off. No reason to have it on. Um, oh, that, that, what is that? Why is it going pukey? It sounds like, oh, 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 oh. um, like it's fighting it a little bit. I'm not sure. Uh, I did unplug it anyways. I want to get this stuff off the back. Uh, I just take and uh, get some solder into the tip here. Just to tin it. So it don't. It's kind of like the tip for uh, soldering iron. I want to keep it tinned. Just last longer and it, you get a lot better uh, action with it if you keep keep it tinned up every uh, in fact every I'd say like fifth fifth hole that you do or clear hitting the pump I would uh, recommend just tap it give it a give it some fresh solder in the tip you don't have to suck it in or nothing just have it hanging it seems to hang in there uh, hangs out and it mixes once you touch it to the next joint it mixes with it which is nice and uh and it helps clear that that hole it uh the toughest ones are the holes ow, the holes that are um that, are, that get smaller uh the bigger holes are actually nice you, you clean them right out the smaller ones must be you just don't have the suction through them that you'd want they're, uh, they're, them are the toughest, it seems. So we'll get these all tightened down. Naturally, that burn my mat. Burn my mat. Yeah, it sounded, uh, sounded very weak, though, the motor did, I thought. Uh, Gotta put this in. I think I can stuff it. It's not like it's uh <laughs> it's flimsier than hell, let's put it that way. It's not like a precise freaking thing.
unbelievable. Stay in there. Now. Now I got you. Yeah, you're right where I want you. We got two more. And we're ready to. Boy, that sucker's still putting off a lot of heat. It's obviously unplugged. Being so thick in that really holds a lot of residual heat. We'll pull out that big capacitor. We'll pull a couple things out of that board right there. Let's see how good it's working. It'd be nice to have this thing going again. It's been down for a long time. I bet you it's well. It's one of my last. I didn't get to use it much after, well, I, it's after I last worked on it. it. I don't think there was much after that. It was all right, it was okay, and then all of a sudden, a uh, month or a week later, whatever, it said, no, nah, we don't want to work anymore. So weird that light don't come on. But we're plugged in again. Should have some juice coming. It'll take it a bit to get up to schnarf. Uh, what else do I have for... Uh, I think I got everything caught up as far as uh, desolder and stuff. That was the other thing with the heating element getting so cooked and baked. I uh, contacted the seller and said, hey, there's something going on here. It was brand new when I put it on. Uh, I thought I might have even ruined it, but I did. He gave me like 20% off or 25% off a new heating element. So I took the plunge and bought another one. But I figure I'll need it soon enough anyway. Oh, yeah, she's got a bunch of heat. She's throwing off some heat. When it's working, this works good. Oh yeah, there it goes. Now we just go around it. Hear it? Wah! Oh! Oh! Didn't clear it. Almost acted like it's clogged. Which it could be with it getting hot and then dicking around with it. That's how they clog up easily. Uh, here's my pen. use this shove it down a lot of times it gets clogged right at the very end here where it comes into the chamber here the collection chamber oh yeah push some stuff out just watch it if you ever do that man that pin gets hot and it gets hot fast you'll pull it out and think oh I just yeah it'll scorch you there we go that's sucking it Sucked it clean. Woo! Yeah, it sits on there. It sits on the little mound. There. Hey, it works. That or else that was a weak ass magic trick. No, it's working sweet. I freaking. I am um, kind of. I was 50 50, to be honest with you. Whether that would be it, I th even if that was it, I figured there'd be something else going on too that would keep me away from the full victory. If you could see, take a look at the, the iron here. You can see where it, it's been cooked. I mean, it's blue, bronzish here, you know. Uh, what do they call that? Blue, bluing. Where it's been, it's, it's got warm. It got a little toasty. So, we'll go on the big, go on this big one here. You, it sit right on the, on the mound, you know, and you just hold that little pressure, all of a sudden it'll go bloop, you'll feel it just slide right to the board because the solder melted, and the nozzle goes right to the board then, and uh, then I just go around once, that way I feel like I'm heating the whole thing and moving it 
so everything's nice and loose and ready to ready to be sucked up and then pop it and it seems to work pretty good uh, quite a bit of the time like when you're doing a bunch of pins in a row for like a, a, a dip a dual in line package anything like that uh, what happens is every other few of them you'll you'll get one that'll stick it'll be pushed to one side and when you come off of it it'll be stuck but you'll never know that when you're trying to pull it out you figure it, if it don't fall out it's hard to tell what pins loose or not um, but that's what happens is the darn you'll have one stuck see it just boop, pop down and I give it a, a round the world we could call it and uh, yeah there's our diode sweet so there we go uh, I got the schematics and everything I, I know it took me a bit to find the schematics initially and get them off um, and I hope that helps out someone if they ever need anything um, honestly the schematics looking at it it was the I couldn't figure it out myself um, I'll show you in fact let me uh, uh, I just wanted to pop this last one I'll show you what, what what I've never dealt with before I couldn't figure out the potentiometer what was going on because there's like splits three times on the board